What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio. Folks, I got a real treat for you. Shane So in the house. Hello. So, what's going on? Yeah, Shane So. I'm good. How, <laughs> how are many, you? How many jokes have you heard during your life with the word, with the last name So? All the time. Shane So funny. Shane So cool. Shane So corny. Or Shane SEO, like search engine optimization. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. spelled that way. I wouldn't have guessed yeah. it was So. You know, to me, that's S E W or S O. Yeah, so a lot of the, people say e, SEO. Yeah, I'd probably yeah, think yeah. SEO or CO or some shit. Mm-hmm. So, dude, you are apparently by the notes your team or some team gave me. I'm trying to figure that out <laughs> right now. Seems to make you, uh, how old are you? 37. Dude, you're 37 years old. And when's the first time you became a quote unquote millionaire? Hmm. I'd say about 33. Okay, so, five years ago. Okay, so here's my question. Was okay. that, that day that you realized, hey, man, I'm a millionaire. First of all, did you grow up rich? No. Did you grow up poor? Uh, kind of lower middle class with my family. All right. Mm-hmm. So you had no money to speak of. No one handed you any. Oh, nothing. You, you started uh, four years ago in real estate, and now you're a multi-millionaire or millionaire? Oh, uh, I guess multi. Yeah. Dang, dong. See, that's what people <laughs> want to listen to. That's why people are tuning in. Now, how'd you do yeah. it, Shane? That's what they want to know. Well, to correct you, too, is this was seven years ago. I bought my first house one month before 30, and I'm 37 now, so seven years ago. How much cash did you have to have saved to buy your first house? Okay, so I guess, do you mind if I say the whole story? And I, it, Well, yeah, and I also you know, would say that if it's not relevant today you know, make that note because I'll be listening like this is what I got to do. But if I can't do it today, then it doesn't really matter what you did then. Yeah. I'd want to get to what would you do today? Okay. Cause like I always see you guys out there killing it in real estate. And I think to myself, damn dude, like why am I not out there doing what they're doing too? Yeah. You know, I can attract a bunch of youngsters to run around a neighborhood and find me the shitholes that are willing to be literally, you know, mm-hmm. sold to me or flipped or do you flip or what do you do? Well, see, that's what I'll get to. I, I, we mainly do buy and holds right now. We buy creatively, but the kind of start, I guess, is like I watched podcasts and interviews like this and like guys on YouTube. And I was like, okay, I want to learn what they're doing. And I was 25 when I was watching that. And for five years, I really did. I looked at properties, got them under contract. I got scared and then I'd cancel them. You were wholesaling. No, no, no. I was just trying to buy them to do like the HGTV stuff. I didn't even know what wholesaling was, to be honest with you. I just knew that I wanted to do How did you get the money estate. to buy them? Yeah. So um, whenever it came down to it, like I said, I got houses under contract and canceled because I just didn't have the money. I didn't have the credit. But on the last one, a month before I turned 30, I had found a house, got it under contract. It was a pre-foreclosure, $45,000. And then um, I called the realtor to cancel like I always did. And he said, Shane, and ended up, it was a friend. He says, you got to do it. And I was like, oh, man, I'm so afraid. So I called a buddy of mine. His, his name is Zoran Moore. Zoran. His mom named him after some TV show on w, like 007 sh- uh, show. And um, I said, hey, man, can I borrow 45000 He lended me the forty five. I used $20,000 in credit cards. And we put, you know to do the repairs. We had 65 into it. And then we did flip that for 124 and I split the profits with them. So I made about 20, 30 grand. Now, when you, when you, when, when I hear those numbers, it sounded, it sounds to me like it was a real shithole. It was a foreclosure. It was what, like what a town, like Rome, where, Georgia. Oh, well that might've yeah. been a nice house there. Yeah, I'm it, talking it, about it, like it. here, a hundred grand ain't going to get you shit. Oh no, no. And also don't forget this was 2017. So they still had a decent amount of Houses that were foreclosed that the banks had. Why Rome, Georgia? So That's where you, I lived. Okay, so you just went out and where you mm-hmm. lived. Yeah, I lived there, yeah. Who taught you to find that property? A realtor friend, my buddy that was the agent, he brought it to me and said, Shane, you got to get it. Now, so, my question when I hear about shit like that is, why didn't he get it? He was 20 years old, had no money, and just got his real estate license. And yeah, I but he came just, to you and you had no money. You had to go borrow well, He didn't know I didn't else. have any money, I think. He just knew I wanted to do real estate and I had martial arts schools, like two or three of them. So I think he thought I had more money than what I really had. You had none saved though. No, I had none saved. Okay. So you borrowed 45 grand from your buddy and you went and did, you followed through and you did it mm-hmm. and then you sold it. How many months later? We sold it uh, eight months later. That's how horrible I was at it. I wasn't, uh, had no experience. So it took me eight months. But uh, during that period, I realized I am not 
uh, good in construction, doing fix and flips. And I don't know how to even put an L in the wall, really, to be honest with you. So um, mid and also the contractor we hired to fix the home, he bailed mid project. So I had to find someone else to come finish. It was just stressful. So I went back to YouTube and I started seeing videos about people buying creatively because on a fix and flip, if you buy a home and sell it, you got to redo it over and over again. But this old man, I still can't, I can't find the video anymore, to be honest. I've tried to find but this old man on a really unprofessional, like, setup, had an echo in the room. He said, talk to a seller, get them to owner finance it with no money down, and then do another thing called a lease option. And then that's, that's what opened my mind. So from that point, I went on Zillow, found houses for sale by owner. Um, this lady had her house for sale for 95000 And... Um, I went and tried to pitch terms to her and she said no. So I did fail on that one, but I learned how it felt to talk to a seller instead of going through a real estate agent. I walked the property with her, saw that it wasn't so bad to get a no and honestly just ask for terms. But um, soon after that, I ended up finding a landlord, a lady that was, she was mid 60s, so she was still a young lady. She was just wanting to retire and just, you know, live the good life. And um, in my mind, it went, what that old man popped in my mind, he says, usually a landlord bought the property for what? Cash flow. They just want to make a monthly income. Well, I contacted this lady. Um, she was in the middle of an eviction. And I called her and I said, hello, I'm interested in your home. I'd like to, you know, come take a look at your house. She said, well, I have an eviction. They're going to be out on Friday. So I met her on Saturday. She also wanted $95,000. I walked through the property. Um, and it Man, was just again, trash. 95000 in that area, was that like a nice house? Because I'm picturing no, like, this dang, is, dude, where are you finding $95,000 houses? Yeah, 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 this is more like a C-minus house, to be honest with you. you know, but I was just beginning, you know, so I didn't so know. So what would that house look like today in it, Vegas? Well, funny enough, it actually went on um, for sale on Zillow for um, 199000 now. So it's kind of doubled since then. But I've sold it, actually. But... Um, Walked through the property. The floor was kind of leaning inside the kitchen. It was trashed. I negotiated with her and talked her from 95 to 45. And she let me pay her $286 a month. And then I found a tenant to pay $1,000 a month. And she let me pay no money down. So that was my first creative finance. And then um, in now the I always wonder in my mind right there yeah. at that point when I yeah. hear these stories. How would she do that? Why would she do that? Why yeah. does she just rent it out for a thousand a month and keep the cash flow? You know, honestly, um, it depends on each person's situation. So in her situation, she saw she had her home. It was free and clear. She didn't owe anything on it. It needed a lot of repairs and maintenance. It needed a new roof. The air conditioning was bad. It's junk. So inside you walked the home. around and and basically showed her that hey, you're gonna I'm gonna have to put a lot of money in this thing. Yeah, and I just said, to I don't get want... it just to get it back to sellable. Yeah. Yeah, and I told her, I said, look, I don't know if the bank will loan on this home in this condition. And that's true. Like I said, the kitchen floor was kind of kind of wiggling and kind of slanted. And I said, look, I don't want to pay you. a." She actually wanted a down payment, too. And I said, well, I don't want to pay a double down payment, pay you 10000 or whatever, and then put another ten or fifteen in here. That makes it tough on me. Let me, you know, seller finance me the home. Let me get what needs to get fixed, fixed. I'll give you what you were really wanting in a Did home. Did you get her like to pay to fix it? No, I fixed it. I, but you could have. I could have. Yeah. Imagine but, that. Yeah, but that's the point. I wanted to be a good, a, a good easy buyer, someone easy to work with. And, I know. I yeah. know a guy. Tell me if you've done this. I know a guy. He walked up, got some owner financing on a property. Mm -hmm. There was apparently nine hundred thousand dollars equity. Wow. In yeah. the property, so the guy convinced the guy, the seller, mm -hmm. to borrow, put a second on the home. Yeah, because he wanted money down, and if he and if he didn't get money down, it ain't happening. He wasn't going to do it. Yeah, so this dude literally said, "Okay, I got an idea. Why don't you go get a second on your home for three hundred or whatever the hell the down was? I'll pay the second and the first, yeah. same terms." And the guy went and borrowed his own money for his own down payment, and then gave this dude the house. I'm thinking, see. Guys, where are these deals? Where are these owners? I want some of these. Yeah. Like, yeah. where are they? Can they line up for me? How do I find them? If you want to do what I just did with that lady is um, go to the courthouse and go ask for the current evictions happening right now. And funny enough, in some counties, it actually gives the phone number to the landlord. And that landlord 
is like really stressed. They're very motivated in that moment. Motivated it's, to sell it? Yeah, well. No, they, they yeah. might just motivate to get another tenant in there. Well, so, yeah, most of the time. But honestly, I'd say four out of ten times they actually will be. Because in fact, we just got a, a deal done today. 18 doors. And we got that from an eviction lead. We went to the courthouse, saw that they were going through an eviction. How, how do you know that they're valuable, though? What, in the property? Yeah. Oh, well, we kind of just look up the comps in the area to kind of see. That's, is that the secret sauce that I would join your community over? Because didn't you start a community? Yeah. So we're on school community. We're um, our acquisition architects. It's a free community, too. Acquisition architects, folks. Mm -hmm. So here it says you were in Taekwondo. I was, yeah. What happened with that? So my dad's, I'm half Korean. My dad's from Korea. My mom's white and from Chicago. Uh, so I grew up doing martial arts. And then I started a Taekwondo school when I was 22. And um, I did that all the way up until I started doing real estate. In fact, I still have two schools. So what are they called? Stowe's Martial Arts. And it's in Calhoun and Rome, Georgia still. I would say like, you know, you get your ass kicked. So... Yeah, I have actually. <laughs> well, dude, if you're in, in Taekwondo, if you're in Taekwondo, you probably did some ass kicking. A little bit, yeah. Were you in tournaments? I was. I done ESPN a few times for um, breaking, breaking boards, creative. I did backflips and break boards and stuff. And and you then, were like uh, one of but those, I didn't do much like of the fighting of those, stuff. Huh? You were one of those like demonstrationists. Yes, more of the showmanship. Yeah, I did a little bit of stunt doubling too. I was going to ask you ever been in the movies because anybody mm -hmm. that knows how to do all the kicks and high kicks and shit, you guys always have to stunt double for people. Yeah, we always uh, we always have our face covered and we're the ones who get kicked. So. And I'm reading these must ask questions. And as you all know. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, Tim. I don't do what I'm told, Tim. Matter of <laughs> fact, you almost got them to where I wouldn't even read them only because you put must. <laughs> Dude, am I weird? I think I, I think I might be a little bit weird because I hate being told what to do. Oh, same. That's why I'm an Let entrepreneur, FYI. Mm -hmm. Be your own boss. Yeah, I mean, dude, listen, even with like real estate, like I'm listening because why am I not out doing this? I, you know, well, Brad, you already got a bunch of money. Dude, number one, no, I don't. Okay. And for you to think I have a bunch of money is because you don't have much. And mm -hmm. that should be alarming to people. Mm -hmm. Like, I listen to these things and I, yes, I could not, if I wanted to, I could retire and just live, but I can't live huge mm. real estate. You can live huge. If you, you keep can. holding Absolutely. a buddy of mine told me this, mm -hmm. the trick is to never sell. Have you ever sold real estate? We try not to sell. We usually buy and hold. That's but, right. But do you ever sell it? We do only if we're going to up it. a billionaire buddy of mine. Are you a billionaire? No. Okay. So listen to this guy. Cause he is, he said, <laughs> The trick to real estate, Brad. Never sell. Never sell. Yeah. And I said, see, I don't get it. Like, how can you, how can you get the money if you never sell it? He's like, oh, you'll see. But I never, <laughs> I never, I never like kept, kept learning from him. I would imagine, well, but I right. know, I know a little bit now because I know people in the real estate yeah. game, but I'm just like real surfacey knowledge. Yeah. All I always ask myself is, dude, number one, how come everybody doesn't like reach out, get a hold of you and say, show me it, that aren't you know, rich or well off like dead folks. If you're listening to this, mm -hmm. you ain't making freaking coin. Reach out to this dude. He wasn't making coin either. Now he's making <laughs> coin. Yeah. But even in this market, it works. It does. Cause, cause you got to know what you're looking for. What you, you do. And honestly, it's just, um, the, the, what the angle that we kind of come about it is we want to work with the seller. They're usually in a situation, you know, and we, we try, I, I believe that I like to do business with people. I like, I assume you're the same. So when I'm talking with a seller and I'm trying to get them to do owner financing over 20 years or 30 years, I tell them it's like we're married together for this amount of time. You know what I mean? So I want to be very kind with them, make sure that we kind of click really well, be very transparent. Once you've built some. But you're not really them, married as soon as they sign the deal and it's like quick deeded into your name. Yeah, well, there's, well, the no, deal is mine. there's no relation anymore. Yep. You ain't married. Well, there's still the bank, though. So I'm upgrading them from landlord to banker for that period of time. So it might be for five years or 30 years. So we are connected. I just want to let them say, hey, look, I'm a good buyer. We built a good relationship. And the reason that's very important is they bring me to other deals. So like the whole just in a quick like nutshell, everything is I started with single family trying to fix and flip thing, did single family. 
We I built up the 400 homes, single family. 95% of that is all owner financing or very creative wow. things. And then in Rome, Georgia, in Rome and South Georgia, I did some in New Jersey. So South you're just Carolina. knocking on doors, talking to good old boys, talking about their house. Absolutely. And also dealing with investors, you know, honestly, I mean, like, you know, there's uh, my first portfolio I bought uh, that was single family, 60 or 67 homes from an older gentleman. Do you have these little, uh, you know, hacks as to what to offer because like i can't imagine that conversation with somebody hey mm -hmm. i got an idea i, I know you want to sell it mm -hmm. and i know you're looking for a big fat check so you can yeah. move on mm -hmm. but how about i just give you like payments for the next 20 years yeah so but if i was I, if i was an owner i'd go no like go get a loan i want my fucking money absolutely and how I'll do you so, get people to agree so some people say well i actually know if i can't get all my cash i don't want to do it yeah. And I said, I agree. Every seller I talk to, they always want all their money. However, because of this, 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 and I explained the reality of the situation. Like that lady, I say, this house, I can't get a loan on. The roof needs to be done. Floor, air, I just explain, bring the reality moment is what I always tell them. We bring the reality about the situation and say, here's what we can do. And then we can cash you out later or in, in another case, for example, there was, um, there's three brothers. They, this was my first apartment complex, 44 units. Why would they owner finance me, you know, an apartment complex when they could give it to basically a property management company and they don't, they can still keep it passive. Why would they sell it to me? And, uh, basically when I went to talk to them, I found that their situation is they've owned the property more than 30 years. They've depreciated out. So instead of paying 20% capital gain, it would have been 33%. So they would have had to pay a little over $750,000 just in taxes to sell it outright. But the way that I was able to structure it because of their situation. Now, not everyone's in this situation, but they were specifically in this specific situation is it was better for them to take monthly payments over a long period of time and tackle their, their capital gain per year instead of all at once. So if you sold me a building, let's just say that you, this is a beautiful building. Let's just say you pay 20 million for it and you're going to sell it for 25, your gains 5 million bucks. You're going to have to pay 20% plus the recapture. I wouldn't. Uh huh? I wouldn't. Selling this? I oh, wouldn't. Oh yeah, because you, you write it off in a way? No, because I'll, because okay. I'll 1031 exchange it into something bigger. Exactly. And that's the other thing. So if someone wants the 1031, you can't, you, you shouldn't do owner financing too. That's actually the deal we did today. And that's when we, we move it over to a different one, say master lease it. So let's just say you're going to upgrade and move to a bigger building, but you don't want to sell this in 1031 because rates are high right now, right? Prices are high. It's not the most opportune time. Well, you could master lease it to someone like us. And at least you're making your cash flow. It's the same thing, but we'll handle repairs, taxes, insurance, everything. You that don't sounds do lovely. Now, yeah. let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you have a contract? already written up that we, could, we could use? You, you got the template? Well, 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 like I said, well, on this building, for example, or those apartments, it's kind of specific. There's a little bit of terminology that's needed to be done because um, I have the basic contract, but then the terms are always tweaked a little bit. And that's good for, you know, usually like, for example, me and you, we do this deal and I'm buying this building for 25 million or whatever. And I, so I'm going to lease it from you. And in five years, I'll cash you out or three years, I cash you out. That gives you three years to find a building to do the 1031. That's, that would be the benefit for you, the seller. For me, the buyers, I get to come in with little money, get into a property, get it, you know, according to my policies, if I'm going to, you know, redo le leases or I have a different direction, I can go ahead and get in here and do what I want to do. And it helps me be able to basically refinance technically. It's, it's still a purchase, but it, it's kind of like a refinance after those three years helps me cash out and I got in with little money. So it's kind of a win-win and usually if it's not a win-win situation, I don't want to do it. And I tell the seller, if you're not excited about, it or if it, you're not going to, um, you know, get some, a win out of it, I don't want to do it. That, that's just the truth. That's your, that's your takeaway close. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have you guys used his methodologies and made deals? Yep. So you're just out there, smoothing people out their houses with terms. Yeah, I, mean, well, See, I guess like, so. Dude, next time you run into someone willing to do those, mm -hmm. just let me have it. Yeah, yeah, we have a few. Especially the no the downs, one. the no downs and the who cares. Yeah, here, mm -hmm. give it to me. Now, yeah. here's my question. Mm -hmm. You give me this unit, because this is why I don't get involved, is because, like, that sounds too easy. Somebody wants to give me a 44-unit building. I'm thinking, what's the fucking problem with this thing? I'm going to buy it, and then the 
you know, wood's going to fall down because there's termites or mm-hmm. there's plumbing issues or someone cemented the pipes. Yeah. Like, so, why would they give me a building? Yeah. So let me explain that situation. It's actually very, very interesting. I was still doing single family. I just didn't think I could ever do, a, you know, a couple million dollar deal, 44 units. I saw on LoopNet, which is kind of is LoopNet.com, where they sell commercial real estate. And they had it up there for like a certain price, $1.9 million. And I said, oh, man, that must just, that's $1.9 million for 44 units. Sounds like a, you know, like you said, like a ghetto or cheap property. Something's wrong. A year later, I look back and they rose the price from 1.9 to 2.6. And it still hasn't sold. And I remember thinking, because it's also in the South. And I was thinking, oh, it's probably just some, you know, country guy, hillbilly guys or something. So when I went to go, but I was watching a video from Grant Cardone that says, even if you can't buy an apartment complex or or property or whatever you're trying to do, just be around it. I heard that on a YouTube video. So I, I said, you know what? I'm just going to do that. I don't want that property. It's in Calhoun, Georgia. You know, it's just, it's, you know, it's probably just a low income. Something's wrong with it, you know, but I called him. I did exactly what Grant said. I went, walked the property. They had just put a brand new roof on it. 44 units, three acres behind it. They, their dad had built it. They inherited the property from their dad, three brothers. They didn't want to be property managed, you know, like property managers. They just wanted an income. So we went and did our due diligence. Look, it was brick next to, it's honestly like 150 yards behind a Starbucks and Chick-fil-A. So great location. And um, as they were speaking to me, because I didn't think in the, like anyone would own or finance me like an apartment complex. But he said, um, as they were speaking, I realized they said all the motivations of all the sellers that I was able to discuss, you know, their single family home with. So um, I honestly, I was going to pitch something kind of creative. I said, I'd give them, you know, 2 million now and then let them owner finance the rest. And I was going to use that with a mix between the bank and the seller so I could do it with no money down. But they rejected that. And for six months, I just stayed persistent. They told me no probably 15, 20 times. But in the end, the two things that got them, well, I guess three is number one, I was persistent. I kept a good relationship. I built trust. Uh, Number two, I sat with them with the attorney and their CPA, you know, and said, hey, look, you know, if you're confused, sir, you shouldn't make a decision. But let me tell them what we're trying to do and let them tell you if that's correct for your situation. And then the third thing is, like I said, they had a high capital gain and they did not want to do a 1031. I even tried to convince them to do a 1031, to be honest. But they said, no, we're out of the real estate game. And I, we, we, how we structured it with no money down, interest only payments. So my payments was $12,500 a month. The rent income was eighteen. dollars they, And they also had them a month to month uh, leases. We raised the rent. But if the rent is already coming to them for 18, why would they give it to you for 12? Like if I'm that owner, I'd be like, Bro, I listen, I love your offer, but I'm already getting 18 in cash flow. Why would I come along and give you that cash flow in exchange yeah. for 12? Yeah, and, and again, and goes, give you the building. Absolutely. So it goes to those same three brothers. One was in his 70s, one's in his 60s, one's in his 50s. The one in the 50s, he's he goes hunting and he, he's not very uh, interactive with the property. The middle, uh, the middle brother, he's he's doing other ventures. And then the older one, he was the one managing his mid 70s. He was tired. He didn't want to manage it. And if they passed See, it makes away, sense. we just did it just, yeah. I can't believe there's multiple ones out there like that. Oh yeah. So we which, got, which is true by the way, cause I asked some guy mm-hmm. one time and his response was, I always said, man, that was a good response. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, why are they doing it? And he said, I think he said something to the effect of, I don't question why, but I take advantage that they do and they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there's all kinds of people. I don't want the property. Why? Why wouldn't you just, uh, who knows? I knew a, a, a person once that, and I don't know if it's true, but they said they had equity in their property, but it got repoed. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the deal? They had mm-hmm. more equity than they owed on the house. So imagine you got a house worth, let's say 200 grand mm-hmm. and you only owe like 47 grand mm-hmm. and you can't pay. So they're shutting their, they're going to fucking repo it from you. It's crazy. Isn't you, it? you don't know to, to get the equity out of the house and pay the 47 grand off before they, you let them take the house. But apparently they lost the house. And I'm like, how do you lose it? 
Is that real? Do yes, you lose it, it like that? Yeah. Honestly, what's even crazier is I've been to people. There was, for example, I'll just tell you an example. There was a husband and wife. They owed $55,000 on a home. It was a $250,000, $275,000 home. I went and said, hey, look, I'll give you, you know, like the, the 50 grand or 60 grand or whatever. And let me just owner finance me your equity portion or whatever. And no matter what I offered him, I even low by, so I'll give you a cash offer later on. I'll give you 240,000, 220,000 or whatever the offer was. They still rejected it. Two months later, I found out they lost the home. They would rather lose their home than refinance, right? Like you were saying, or sell it. It's just amazing. And that happens so much. It's shocking. So you discovered this and took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And now you have how many properties? I have 400 um, single family, 100 plus apartment complexes. Um, We have laundromats, cleaners, car washes. So you're uh, buying businesses this way too? Yes. Actually, I bought a cleaners actually. Um, We paid a million two. I sold the business for a million. And then I have the buildings up for such two buildings for 2.9 million for sale. Now we're trying to sell those and those are triple net lease. So whoever buys those, they don't have to do any repairs, maintenance or pay tax and insurance. So what their rent is, is net to them. You see, so I like that. Yeah, we structure those. So, and another what about, thing, what about people with money like me that want to just like mm-hmm. buy some of the stuff from you or, or invest? Yeah. They just reach out to me and um, they can, they can buy, you know, they can buy from us or we have two funds. So I have a 506 uh, C that's a kind of a debt fund and we pay a flat 6% or 8%. So there's no fluctuation with that. You know, it's just a flat and it's all cross collateralized amongst all the properties within the fund. And this is still pretty, I've had this about three years or so. So we have about seven to $10 million of property. So for example, if someone like you gives a million or two, it's protected on 10 million bucks. Still has risk like every fund and every pro, you know, all the investments, but at least it's cross collateralized. And I created it that way because if I passed away, I want to make sure that the people who entrusted me is taken care of with, you know, equity within the fund. As opposed to. Oh yeah. Them just putting money in stocks. And then it what just would you, well, if you weren't that way and you died, would we all be screwed? No, uh, all the, all there's so much equity. So let's just say you give a million and then I have, you know, eight to $10 million worth of uh, properties. Do, do you know what a, like a lean position on one yeah. property is? So let's just say you invested with me on one single family home and you give me a million bucks and I pass away. You have a lean position. You can take that one home and sell it or liquidate it. With mine, instead of you having one lien position on one property, you're cross collateralized amongst all the properties within the fund. And I just keep it at a really good base. So I have about, you know, um, I think we have like 60% in costs and 40% is usually equity within my fund. So, but it's more of a boring fund because there's no like, you don't get any depreciation. It's a debt fund. The other type of investments we're going to do is syndications. So that's kind of like what Grant Cardone and them do. Yeah. But that's one property and there's a lock-in period for 10 years. So how yeah. long did it take mm-hmm. you to learn the details and the ins and outs? Because obviously, dude, mm-hmm. this is, you know, detailed. It is. You know, you got to know what you're doing a little bit. So I started, uh, I started learning when I was 25. I didn't get my first property till like I said, a month before 30, so about five years. And then honestly, ever since then, I've reached out to every mentor. I paid Grant Cardone 100000 to talk to him for a little bit. I just... Working with Ty Lopez too. What'd He's Grant been mentoring. You? Huh? What would Grant tell you? Grant, my first time meeting with him. You uh, paid him was, 100 grand? I paid 100 grand for the four hour coaching. And then uh, on the first hour, he made a phone call and helped me refinance a property. It netted me $888,000. Well, there's fucking worth this fee right oh, there. Oh, yeah, right away. 30 year, no recourse, um, low interest rate. And it got my foot in the door because of Grant. So shout out to Grant for that. He really helped me a lot. Old Uncle G. Every once, Uncle in, a while, G. Every, every once in a while, he'll yeah. help somebody. And he did on that one. And he didn't ask for more than 100 grand. So. <laughs> well, that's, that's surprising because, dude, like to yeah. me, like, hey, he, he's you know, coaching you for the hundred grand, but mm-hmm. hooking you up and saving you 800 grand. If I was him, I'd have said, dude, how about you give me a little slip? Yeah. And I'm part of everything that he does. I try to, I'm very active about going to events and stuff. So like Ty, Grant, Ken McElroy is really good. Like just, I try Who, and go to as many is as Grant your real estate guy. No, uh, Grant. Um, I went to him to learn personal branding. I actually, like I said, I met you on Necker Island and you kind of, 
got my wheels turning about doing personal brand because I'm more yeah. of an introverted person. I'm not extroverted like you, you know. So, I, but when I paid him, I wanted to learn personal branding and his outlook on how to do the financing for multifamily because he is really smart with multifamily, and it paid off. A lot of people call him a scam, estate. but I think he's a real deal with that. No, I mean, yeah. anyone that thinks OGC's is a scam is just ignorant. Absolutely, yeah. He's brilliant. He's not scamming people. Yeah, but the best real he, estate he, guys, he is interested in selling you something, but that don't make him a scam. Yeah, and I've bought a lot of stuff from him, but yeah. But the best real estate guy is Kim McElroy. Very smart. He has the ABCs of real estate investing. There's uh, another mentor of mine, probably the best commercial real estate investor I've ever seen in my life. Like, I'm a nerd. If you can tell, I'm more of a behind the scenes, like nerdy guy. But And he's the same. His name is Sharif Medawar. Really amazing. Um, as far as um, learning kind of like capitalist kind of stuff, because Ty Lopez says you don't want to be an entrepreneur. You want to be a capitalist. And that same mindset is kind of what Glenn Stearns has really helped me with. He's been a great mentor, him and his wife, Mindy. Um, there's a guy named Lou Brown out of Atlanta. He's the best single family uh, creative person I've ever met. No one, in my opinion, beats him. Um, making sure I'm not missing out on everyone. There's a lot of great guys out there. Just there's a, be there's a couple of good creative guys. Yes. Oh, and Pace Morby, of course. He's really good up and cut. Like he's been around two, three years on social, but he's really good. Well, he's just creative. Mm -hmm. Oh, very creative. Yeah. And now with his new teeth, man, he, boy, is he convincing. His new teeth? Did he get new teeth? Yeah, he's got like perfectly white veneers. Oh, man. I need to do that. <laughs> but yeah, man, he's creative. He, yeah. He, like, dude, he he comes up with all kinds of ways. See, this is where I get stumped. I I might meet the guy and be, yeah, I got that property. I'll be like, oh, you would you take terms? He goes, no. yeah. And then I go, like, what? You know, and as yeah. soon as, well, I need some money down. Oh, fuck, I got no money down. I, you know, I'm out. Where someone else says, well, how about we, uh, how about we try this? And literally, that's why it's creative. It is. Because you're really thinking up, you know, and trying to close. Do you teach people this? Well, that's the thing. So over the last couple of years, I'll have someone reach out and say, Shane, can I take you to lunch, you know, and pick your brain? You know, it sounds a little painful how they say it, but yeah, I'll sit with them. I'll take hours explaining what I did, show all the examples and show them the properties on, on the Internet, what I've done. And then they never took action. The next year they asked me the same questions, you know. So, I want to know, like, where do you find them? Where do you find the deals? Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's say tomorrow morning you wake mm -hmm. up, you look down and you realize you're me. Okay. 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 And, and you stand up and you're like, holy shit, I'm in Bradley's body. Like I need some real estate before, yeah. before we switch back, I, I need to freaking show massive real estate yeah. actions. What would you do first to go find your first property? In, in within seven days, let's just say that if, if I was coaching you to do this, I would say, Two things, real simple. Okay. Don't think about all this data scraping and callers. Some people talk about all these softwares. Two simple things. Number one, go to the courthouse and ask about the current evictions going on right now. Those landlords are basically saying, I will take monthly payments. So that means they're okay with holding the property for a long amount of time. They don't need all their money up front. They want monthly payments. And we're giving them a benefit for doing that. We're rewarding them. And those well, are, are some you of the best them? ones. Because imagine kind of you're like kicking out the loser and you're. Well, I'm upgrading them from landlord of being like a, you know, everyone looks at landlords like scum, right? And we're making them a banker. It means they don't deal with repairs, maintenance, taxes, insurance, CapEx, nothing. They just get paid and they can just, they don't get phone calls that saying my toilet's messed up. They just make money. And that, so we help them with you that. You just elevate them from the landlord to the banker. Yeah, and I'd like to do that too. And yeah. the prices I sound, I hear it's like the slumlord to a banker. That's even better. That's even good. I'm going to try that. Yeah. So I would say go to the courthouse, contact the landlords. Second thing, go on Facebook Marketplace. This is if you're in your bedroom or, or you're sitting on the toilet or something one day and you just don't have nothing to do. Look on Facebook Marketplace and look at houses for rent. Those are also landlords. Some of those are also property management companies, but find the one that's the actual seller saying, I want to rent my home. Reach out to them, say, I'm interested. And this what is if what they, I would What if say. they say, like, none of you creative bastards, what if they say that? Well, these usually are landlords. So let's just say you have a I know, a but I was looking at a house the other day. It was like 32000 a month. Okay. And, I, and, I, and I'm going to be building a house, so I might need a house temporarily so, and so and so it said uh represented by owner basically this is the owner's house i'm like oh shit so i'm calling the owner of the house to rent perfect. it yeah. well 
Mm-hmm. Could I have made a deal with that person? Yes. So this, this is what you would say to him specifically if you're going to move into it. Okay. So I say, Hey, Hey, uh, Hey, sir, my, I was very interested in your home. Can you tell me about it? They'll tell you about the home. They say they want 32,000 a month and you say, okay, well, I have a question for you. If I move into this home and I stay here three, four years and I want to make it my forever home, do you think you'll sell it in the future? And if he, and then wait, if he says yes, then say, okay, what do you think you would want for it in the future? And he'll tell you a price. Say, well, honestly, I'm very interested. Would you be willing to let me rent it, lease it out, and have the option to buy it for that price if I decide in the next three to five years? If you do that, you have successfully gotten a lease with an option to buy. Okay. Once they, they're comfortable with that, you can transition to seller finance possibly. But that's after you've built a relationship and spoke with them and they see your goals. Yeah, you well, know? I think securing an option to buy or first option is Easier. easy. Definitely, yeah. Well, Should you everybody start with do that. that no matter what? Well, if you're going to rent, you might as well rent where you think you're going to buy. Because if you can get, a, and let me tell you a little strategy. I guess this is. Supposedly, dude, the world's coming to where everyone's going to rent. I believe so. Yeah, I think it's going to become a render nation, like out of. Um, well, your boy GC says so, so you must. Well, I agree think with him. So. Yeah. I you agree. have to. Yeah. Well, let's just say that you do the lease with an option to buy. You can actually be creative. Let's just say you're getting this for thirty-two thousand a month. He's willing to sell for five million. Yeah, but okay. that doesn't quick deed it into my name. No, it doesn't. How do but, we do that? Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you the transition on that. But here's the exit dispo. Whether he accepts it or not, here's what you can do to make money. You can actually sublease and sub option it out. So let's say you have it for five million. You can sell it to someone else an option for seven million. They will cash you out at seven million with it before your option expires, and you can net the two, the two million. Okay. So, for example, I did something similar. Only now, if, only if you yeah. negotiated a predetermined value of the house, a lease and an option. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. And you never know where the economy will be in the next couple of years. Well, you could probably yeah. bet the house will be more. Yeah. and that, I've that, never that's seen a house go for. down in value over the over a 10-year period. Absolutely. And so that's the other thing. So I got lease options on homes. A lot of investors, they'll say, don't do lease option. Only get owner finance. And I do try and get owner finance. But in like in your case with this building, would it make sense for you to lose your ability to do a 1031 and seller finance it to me? Or would you lease it with an option to buy and you get a premium price? You yeah. see, that's that's the reason why I would not want you to do seller finance. I'd be hurting you. And then you would never sell me other deals. You would never recommend me to other people. In the end, it'll cost me more. So it's better to lease it with the option to buy. So you lease me this building for, I don't know, $50,000 a month or whatever. And I have the option to buy it for $25 million. My hope is that I can lease option it to someone else or sell the option for 30 million. In fact, the Empire State Building is a master lease. It's one of the most famous ones. So even the top people are doing that. And it's really incredible, I believe. So you're out there doing it for yourself, but it, it, but I keep seeing by these kind of notes that you're also, te- do you teach this shit? Yeah, so we just started teaching this now. So we're, like I said, I'm trying to learn personal branding. So we built a single family basic course um, and I think, is that free? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's actually free. We're, we're doing that free to get people started to see how they so like it. So if someone it. went through that, would they be able to go secure a property of their own? Yes. With zero money down? Zero money down. Did you buy yeah. some shit with zero money down? Stop you lying. <laughs> Y'all did? Yeah. See, I don't oh, understand. Yeah. Every okay, time, but, every time I hear about this, I get excited. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I got to go do this. It and sounds, then I don't go do anything. I'm one of the guys you pointed out earlier where they learn and they don't do shit. Yeah, and it, well, <laughs> well, it sounds like a scam. So here's the thing. Let's just say, how can you buy a house with no money down, but pay a pretty big down payment? That's the question too. So let's say you sell so, me a yeah. home. How can, how can I pay no money down and you're the seller? How can I buy the home and give you a down payment of 30 grand? And me come no money out of pocket and I don't borrow the money from a friend. How do you do that? Okay, so here's what you would do. Let's just say you're looking on Facebook again. We're still going. I'm going to go back to that. And you're talking to sellers or landlords. Okay. Whether they do owner financing or a lease option. Let's just say that I, I, get you, I talk to you and you say, I have my home. I want two fifty for it. I want 50000 down, right? Shane, I will owner finance it to you. I want 50 down, I'll finance the 200 grand. Once I have it under contract, 
I then market it to tenant buyers. Have, have you heard of tenant buyers? Yeah, well, it's basically rent to own. Yeah, kind of lease with an option. Rent to own is a, there's rent to own, lease person, lease option. We do a lease with an option. So basically I say, I'll, we'll, we'll market the property, get someone to give us 50,000 or more, then I close. If I can't close, because this is someone who has no money, right? I have no money in this example. If I can't find a tenant buyer in time, I contact you, the seller, and say, hey, look, I need two more weeks or I have to cancel. And the seller will either say yes and extend, and then I'll try and keep finding someone, or I'll cancel it. And it's no harm to you, no harm to me. You see? But in the best case scenario, if you can find someone that says, I want 10000 down, and I lease option at four. 30,000. So I can make 20,000 up front the day that I close. The seller gets 10, I make 20, and I have a tenant buyer in the property and they do the repairs and maintenance. I also get just a check. See, now who wants to learn that shit? Come yeah. On. Let's try one one day. I would like to do that. Well, Vegas again, I, hey, you want to use me as an example, I'll blow it out all over social media and you'll oh. freaking get a lot of customers that way. Yeah, we'll start You're on already going to get customers to be because people on here are listening to you and discovering you. Yeah, you have an amazing following, by the way. Congratulations. Well, the pro- well, thank you. It's just, to me, no one's called you yet to, because people always say, hey, how do I get on dropping bombs? I'm like, well, shit, getting on's easy. See, you get, you did that. Mm. It's releasing it that that you want. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'd to love funny. to do it. <laughs> Actually, we have a video coming out. Two of the other guys, they're not here with us, Tim and Colin. We did a seven-day challenge where they took what I taught them and we spun a wheel and they had to go to two different cities, just like undercover building and like what uh, Glenn had done. But we sent them to two different cities and they had to get a deal in a week. And we had film crew with each one of now them. When, and you can see the whole process. Now, when you get these deals, I mean, it, it takes years for them to flip and actually mature and, and start winning big, right? You're not just going to get a deal and you're a millionaire. Well, it depends. And by the way, what if you get a deal and it's the wrong deal? Well, yeah, yeah, that's the thing is you do need to have a little bit of knowledge. So when we first start teaching someone, we were going to create something called like the Encyclopedia of Real Estate Investing because we want to teach all the terms and nitty gritty stuff. And then we want to show you how to use it. So like I said, we're doing a, a six day boot camp. The first day is education. The second day is we're going to actually sit with everyone and source deals together like on a, on a computer screen and actually call sellers and make the first contact. Then the second day, we're gonna go to some of these properties and let them watch us negotiate with the sellers. And then- um, the well, what's the seller gonna do when someone knocks on the door and 30 people well, watching? Well, yeah, that's what we're thinking. So there's two, you know, it depends. We may have one-on-one, but if, if not, then we'll have a cam or something, you know, but we want them to kind of see the experience uh, of what we're doing, how do, we, how do we interact? Because it's not like, like do this, this, and that. You gotta learn how to pivot. And that takes experience. So they need to watch someone experience. The reason I like Pace and all these guys is online, you can see kind of like their entire process. They let you see behind the scenes. So we're just trying to take it a a level even further and just say, hey, let come with this or here's a video camera or whatever. You know, Um, what is the fourth day? We're going to do dispos. We're going to show you how we lease option the properties. You know, so we get 30,000 down and then we lease it. And how do we talk with those people? The fifth day, we're going to, each person that comes to the camp, we're going to start on their city where they live and start doing calls and source with them on their deals. And then the sixth day, we're just going to do a quick Q and A and just kind of hang out and just, you know, follow up on some of the stuff we did over the week. So that's in July. So well, this will drop, this will drop before then folks. So where do they go to sign up for that? If they're interested. Where do they go? Shane So Coaching? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you would go to ShaneSoCoaching.com. S-H-A-N-E. Oh, slash summer. ShaneSoCoaching.com slash summer camp. Yeah, and by the way, yeah. that's so as in SEO. Yes. Well, dude, if you want to do some sort of challenge, I'd I'd probably do it. I just want to schedule it out so I don't overcommit. Yeah. But how yeah. much time would I be required to commit to? Let's do, um, I don't want to say, hey, come for a week, but I would say let's do one day with like two, three hours or one or two hours where we can just source and call. And then when and we you have, think I'll a, have a deal by then. Do what? That's how quick I'd have a deal. Well, we'll, we'll do three days or two, two or three days. First day, we'll, we'll do a source and a call set appointments and then we'll we'll go in person if you like i think that would be real good content and it'd be fun for people to see we'll walk with the seller and talk and then we're going to pitch and then the third day is just the closing very simple one two three first contact in-house presentation 
because I'd like to do it local here where you're at. And then third day is uh, the closing. That'd be cool. How to find them, then what to say. Yep. And, so, then, and then what, the paperwork? Yeah, the paperwork. Well, the paperwork would be the in-house presentation the day of. Yes. And once they agree and they sign, you got the templates to sign them? Yeah, yeah, just easy contract. Well, each state's a little different, but they're really simple, very simple. What are the best states to operate in? Uh, I think Las Vegas is really good. So Nevada, Arizona is really uh, really good. Texas, Georgia, Florida. I like the southeastern See, I, states. I'll buy all the shit I can. Yeah. We'll bring you deals if you're really interested in real estate. Like, so we have well, yeah, but I, I want the deals that you're finding, not the deals that you're bringing. See what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you're going to find them and then yep. add a little, then bring them to me, which is better because I don't have time to go find them. But mm. I want to learn also. I want to learn. What if shit hits the fan and I go broke? Mm. Well, dude, I want to pick up the, I want to go out and do this shit. Yeah, know, you're, you're not going to stay broke as long as you got this skill. I agree. And Grant even, I think he said in what, 2008, 2010, his education business went down, I believe. And it was real estate that saved him. Real estate's the best. No, you got you, you, you actually have it backwards or he's lying to you. Oh, sorry. Because 2008, his real estate shit went down. And his oh, education sorry. business, which I showed him how to build, yeah. saved him. Showed him how to make $5 million a month selling passwords to interactive training systems. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sold him to all the businesses, taught him how to sell them, taught him how to build a personal mm -hmm. brand, taught him, taught him, taught him, taught him. And now he's making millions. And and that's when the he got scared when the real estate crashed. That's oh, but it was the cash flow. So the, so there's two. And I got parses. videos to prove it if you ever want to go look at them. Oh, I'd love to see him actually. Well, dude, on the first second 10x technically, mm -hmm. he's on stage and he was telling the story. So there's that video. Mm, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Maybe I got it backwards then. I don't. Yeah, want to you call got him it backwards. He's he. If you go watch this video, mm -hmm. he'll say, you know, Lehman Brothers and the crash, and yeah. you know, Lena didn't even like me, and blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, but I think it was the cash flow that was good. The value dropped, but the cash flow was there. It's it. it that's right. It, it's kind of more a little bit more stable at that point, if that makes sense. The yeah. thing that he did say, and I, I asked him about it because I was nervous about it, as I said. What were the banks coming after you on the technical defaults? Because he was making his payments, but the banks that he that gave him the loan shut down, and other banks acquired those banks and were trying to do a technical default. I think that's I what remember scared that. him. That was scary. Yeah, yeah that's the scary. He part. said he was almost out of business, and he shit his pants, and he told Elena like, "We're done. We're done. We're over." And and again, I mean, he mm -hmm. he says also that that's when he called me and said, "Okay, you ready to do this thing?" Yeah, and I said. You know, about time, motherfucker. So he came into these studios. We filmed his shit. And then we started telling that training. And that training is what got him the revenue. And he wasn't like he was doing nothing with real estate other than mm. s surviving and yeah. freaking. But, dude, that quickly turned back because, dude, that's what he loves, real estate. So yeah. so all the all the uh, training did was kind of uh, and he Amplify. still does the training. Yeah. And Cardone training technologies technically is mm. still training thousands of business because him and I partner on that so me and him like it's still you happening do damon johns too I, I bought his course and I, it was through light speed yeah we do I we remember. do quite a few people's courses it's um amazing. but it, but we don't do their courses it's a, it's the system of ours that they use to deliver their courses does that make sense okay okay but in these other two studios we will make courses for people well, we need to probably hook up with you on that. Like I said, I'm new. I don't know much about courses. I'm more of an introverted person, but people like you and Grant are helping me kind of, I think it's very valuable to have an audience and do good personal branding. It is. Just build a personal brand, build a community, mm -hmm. and, and you know, be willing to help them learn what you did. And, dude, you'll, yeah. it could grow into a massive deal. And it's fulfilling. And also, like, I believe, I, told, I was telling David earlier, I said, it's like building future partners, in my opinion. 100%. And what I do, like, I, can't, I call them scouts. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I like that. Yeah. They have my own little scouts. And also, they get value. It's like we're all growing together instead of just staff feeling all the time. You know, we get to grow together like a good community. Yeah. You know, Grant, uh, we were in Deer Valley. There was a guy that had a house next to the house he rented. Grant mm. rented it. It was like 25 grand a night or a week or something, but it was a badass house on, on Deer Valley. Mm. The one next to it, made the one we were staying at look like shithole. <laughs> yeah. And he, we were driving away and the guy goes to the guy over there. Hey, who, who owns that house that you guys owns a hedge fund. And this is mm. before Cardinal capital. Mm. And, and Grant goes, I'm going to do damn, that. I need a hedge fund and boom. Yeah. yeah. Went and build a hedge fund. 
Yeah. Like, dude, he, he, he acts, he, he uh, he's a good coach or, or mentor for you. If, if you act, because like he, he will get rid of the, Hey, let's not worry about it being perfect. Like, just go do it. You so know, he's, he's a, he's a freaking machine, especially in real estate. There's also yeah. another guy I just had on my podcast, Patrick Carroll. You heard of him? Patrick Carroll. No, M I haven't heard M of him. Patrick before. Carroll. Apparently he's like, you know, big as grant or bigger. And he got institutional money. He didn't mess with a oh. bunch of crowdfunding. Yeah. He goes right to BlackRock and, and, you know, has made them billions. Apparently, you know, major guy. Well, he wants to come out with a course right now too. It's amazing, really. Yeah, there's a big guy in uh, San Diego who I, I tried to do a podcast when he just wants to stay quiet, like, I guess. Unknown. Unknown. His smallest deal he's ever done is $150 million. And he says, yeah, I don't really buy them and hold them. I usually sell them. And I said, oh, you don't hold any? Well, we hold maybe two or 3000 just for now, but we don't really, like, it's like nothing to him. It's amazing what big guys are out there when you start. Well, once you start going, parlaying it, because Grant's been doing it a long time. People yeah. underestimate how long he's been doing it. It's been like, like 15, four, no, 15, 16 years now, isn't it? I'd say more than that. Wow. Since he was 25, I believe. Oh, that's real estate. Oh, I thought you meant the education, like the. Like no, the education, dude, I closed him. And when I, when I closed him, he was already training car dealerships with, you know, workshops and, and, uh, there was no webinars. It was just workshops Event. and live events and, yeah. but it was just car dealers. Mm. He was training car salesmen. That's right. That's right. And so then I convinced him to do it online. And then that kind of led outside of the car business, mm -hmm. started elevating outside of it. And That's then amazing. I convinced him to do the 10 X thing. And we wow. started that and then that opened up a whole bunch of other avenues. Like, dude, you know, all these people coming in want to buy everything else you got. And so now it became like, dude, these, these guys are buying tickets to come here about what else I have. That's right. And they are buying it. Up and it was like, holy shit, dude, I could lose money on the event and still make money on, you know, cause that's how it works. So yeah. he built that damn thing up and, and every penny, guess where it went? All into real estate. Right back into real estate. Like he's almost obsessed with it. Do you do any rentals right now or anything like that? Oh, man. I gave Grant money so he'd quit pestering me. Are you invested in Cardone Capital? Just so he'd quit calling because he kept calling. <laughs> dude, what are you doing? He's persistent. He man. is. And I'm like, dude, do you, you got a million fucking people in this thing. You're worried about me? Well, people ask me if you're in it. I, you know, why, why aren't you in it? You don't trust your... Mm -hmm. I'm like, here, dude. There, I'm in it. But... <laughs> I've gotten a check every month since. Yeah. Not a very big one, but. But it's something. <laughs> yeah, still. It's, well, there's a lot of people holding funds in this economy. Mm -hmm. Isn't it uh, true that they can just stop making uh, distributions in those funds? On that, that, his is a syndication. So, but yeah, they could technically not pay anything if, if and, they feel. And, and I, as an investor, couldn't do shit. You have a preferred return. Means if it makes that amount, you'll get it. So I don't know. They say, let's just say it's a 6% preferred return. If they only have 3%, you get the first 3%. That, that's it. Or if there's nothing, you don't get nothing. That's just, that's part of it. But, but yours, I get whatever pre-agreed pre upon amount. Mm -hmm. So it's next and improved. Are you yeah, are not, you now Cardone's competitor for hedge fund nah, investing? No, Grant's like a well, thousand times bigger. But yeah, no, I mean, People I, listening, I, should they go yeah. invest with Grant or you? Me, yeah. No, so I, I'm going to put it in a different way. So I have a 60-40 method. 60% 60 of your wealth should be in boring things. And when I say that, it's boring and it's stable. It means in a good time, it's the same dividend. In a bad time, it's in the it's same dividend. Yeah. On the other 40% of your wealth, you can put it in syndications because it can go up and down with the market. It's a little more. You'll make more with Grant just to be honest with you, than mine. Okay, so that's the worst sales that I can say to someone publicly. But mine in a bad time, it stays the same. In his, you'll make more, but you have to hold your money with him 10 years. Mine's a one-year hold. Gotcha. Mine's a debt fund, and mine's a little less risky as well because it's on multiple properties. But because you're giving him on one property, you're supposed to get paid more. So the more the risk, the more pay you should get. The less risk, the less... Hey, you get, and that's mine's the less yeah, risk. Makes that's sense. All. Yeah. Well, dude, I hope you keep kicking that ass. I hope anyone listening to the, to the episode realizes that you too, sir or ma'am can go out there and do it. Absolutely. You guys may not see him. They're off camera, but he's got a couple of youngsters over here. It looks like they're doing it. Anyone can yeah. do it. The question is, is why aren't you? 
That's the question. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself, why aren't you doing it? And if you're like, man, I don't know, call this dude Shane. So yeah, thanks for coming, buddy. Man, I we're gonna do it. a challenge, and then we'll and then I'll like do a bunch of publicity if you can show me how to get my first Absolute. property. Give me three days for like an hour, hour and a half each day. One's for us to source, and we'll do some calls. We'll go in person and view a few properties. We'll look at commercial or single family, and then the third day is just closing. I think it'd be really good time. Don't threaten me with a good time, and I'll end up with a my first properties. Yes. I mean, I have some, but I've like, it's just money in someone else's. I've never done my own. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I got to, what if I want to go compete with Grant so I can freaking go buy his deals before he can. That'd be even better. That'd be yeah. fun. Cause dude, he's it very would. competitive. He is. He oh, is. Dude. And he competes against what Blackstone, all the big guys. Too. No, he's competitive as hell. Like dude, don't yeah. play him a game. He gets freaking. Like he doesn't care if it's a dollar that he's winning or losing. If he's winning or losing, he'll uh, like he it. gets on it, doesn't he? Dude, I lost six hundred and fifty grand to him playing backgammon. He loves backgammon. I bought him a backgammon board from Jay Given Co. Yeah. I'm supposed to go give it to him in person. He don't know that yet, so I hope that that's not filmed, right? This is all filmed. Uh, and yes. and he may not admit it, but he's motherfucking listening. What's up, G? You know hey, you're listening. <laughs> anyway, appreciate you coming in. Till next time, keep it real.